And, and one of the things that hurt us, of course, is we use the boys' home for our special grants and special ed, and now for next year, adding it back up, you can't use the boys' home for special grants. We can include it in our special ed, but we can't use it in special grants, and that's really kind of hurt us. And it's hard to argue, and I, and I talked with Russ and Janice, it's hard to argue when you're the only school in the state that this affects. You're the only one that has this. So it, it makes it, it, and I understand them, they're not going to change the whole formula because of what it does to us in the boys' home. So, you know, that's understandable. Next page, A3. <clears throat> one of the things they do in the TOSA formula, which is the state aid formula, is they always compared you to the five schools above you and the five schools below. Well, I have those marked there. And that's the first two sets of red lines above uh, Fillmore Central and below. In the new formula, they're changing it to 20, 10 above and 10 below. So then I got those formulas also. And then they throw out these, then they have the spending costs over there to the right. And the four I have circled are the two highest and the two lowest. They throw out the two high and the two low, and then they average them. And then, you know, if you're a low spender, you get more state aid, unless you're not equalized like us. So you look at what we spend. We spend $7,534 a student. Well, there's only three schools lower than us. The two I threw out and Wilbur, which is right underneath us. The other 17 schools all spend more than, than we do per student. In fact, the average of that 17 that are left there is 8,428. So we're about $900 per student under the average. Now you would think that would work in our favor, wouldn't you? I mean, I would. I would. Well, if you turn the page, here is the new formula. I took those same 20 schools, the exact same ones, you can even look on the previous page, <coughs> and I had Janice print me out their budget authority, and look who has the least budget authority of all those 20 schools. We do. And again, it had to do, I think, I don't know positively, but I think it had to do with the money we set aside for the boys' home and subtracted in and out, and now they're not letting us do that. Because if you add that 410000 on to that 4800000 we would be about a little bit ahead of where Wilbur is. It would be a little bit more closer to the, to the middle. So there's our budget authority. And you notice, you know, we're, there are schools smaller than us that get more budget authority, and then all the ones around us get more budget authority. And I can't tell you that I know exactly why we get less. I don't. And Janice is trying to study it for me, but I, that's the only thing I can think of because that's our really only difference between us and most schools is is the boys' home and showing the money in and the out. And I think it, I think it must have hurt us, but. I pounded my head for two weeks and I'm tired of pounding because if we just amend our budget, it takes care of that problem anyway. And I don't think I'll ever win the battle to get us changed on there. The last sheet would show you what it would take to amend the budget, okay? The top one would be the change I make. The bottom one in the green are the only changes. The top one, there is our total budgeted dispersal to transfers instead of being at 7410, which we are this year. And again, that includes special ed, special grants, boys home and everything. And then the necessary cash reserve. So it, that a million dollars is just moving places. But again, I have no intention to do it. I worked six years hard at this budget and to build up the cash reserve. And it's not a situation that I want to do. I just think we need to do it just from those sheets that I showed you. The bottom sentence is what Janice and Russ said we needed to make sure we add in there when we advertise this, if we advertise it. Fillmore Central Schools is amending its budget to capture unused budget authority. This will allow greater flexibility in future budgeting. How about we send the levy a little not ready to see I don't think you could say that. We're amending. We're amending this budget, this year's. Right. Budget. So we. Uh, we're not doing anything with next year's budget. We'll do that in August. But the levy for this year, Jim, has already set. been set. So I'm just saying that 
they might save some phone calls. Yes, yeah. but I'm just saying we're again. I don't. We haven't raised the levy. No, I the last, and I don't in, intend to. If our valuations have been where they've been at, I, if we would get anything from three percent or more, we're going to at least be the same, if not if not less. So. I'll answer any questions I can. And again, I hate to I hate to rust, but May is the only time we could do it. The process we would go through is to advertise this in the paper. At 7:30, instead of starting our regular meeting, we'd have a budget hearing, amended budget hearing, just like we did last August. Uh, Sean would open it up. The community could comment. We'll close, and then the vote will actually be in our regular meeting. So I guess if you're I think we need to have it on there, and then if you're opposed to it, you just vote no when it comes time to amend. Because it's our only chance that we have is to have it at the May at the May meeting. But Janice told me I told her when our meeting was. I can't remember when it is now off the top of my head. Is it the 16th, maybe, or is it the 9th? Ninth. It's the 9th. She said as long as I got her everything. See, normally your budget goes clear through August. And so I thought originally, well, you know, no, we got till August. Well, they send you your new budget materials July 1. So they pull everything off from this LB 235 last week in May, first week in June when the legislature's done to make the budgets that you set for next year. So they said, no, you got you got to have it done in May. So. so in layman terms, if we didn't do this, we would have 70,000 less chance of budget in the future. Correct, because they would take away any of that authority. So if well, we needed there, to go higher, we could. Is that the language term? I, then, yeah, that that 4.8 million, Jim. If you think of that as as what we budget for our regular education kids, and I won't say normal or anything like that, just for our regular education kids. Okay, and then on top of that, we add our boys' home, which is almost predominantly special ed. Any special grants and any exclusions. Okay, well, you know, we always budget a little bit extra in all those areas, and we never really watched how closely we spent for regular education kids because, you know, you code that separately. We didn't really watch that in particular because it usually stayed within two or three percent. It's the other ones that all all went too high. Well, now they're going to work it the other way around, and so instead of Instead of inflating my special ed kids, that doesn't really help us anymore by overestimating SPED. And I can't overestimate my regular ed because they're only letting me have 70,000. So it really constricts our, our total budget by working it the other way around. It's never been a problem because we had more budget authority than we ever needed. And again, I think, I think you guys that have worked with me in the budget the last five or six years and gallons, excuse me, uh, you know, we've been pretty we've been pretty good about raising our budget. It's always been, if it was more than three percent, it was because we didn't know what the success program would cost us or the Boeing home would cost us. And you're seeing it this year. You know, we're going to be thirty-four thousand under just in the in the boys' home expenses, but we, we 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 can make it up. We think in other areas. And again, I don't know what's going to happen between now and August. We think we're going to be under budget. We're planning on it. I'm still banning, planning on buying at least one of the new buses out of our budget, maybe both of them. This might be the year to pay for both of them out of your regular budget because we may not have the room to do it. You know, you still have the ability to transfer in depreciation and to build that up. Those things, those things don't change. But uh, you know, the 7.4 million, we're going to spend about 7.1, and so I'm asking you to move a million to give us 8.4. But oh, we're still only going to spend 7.1. Not going to spend any more than, than that. Now, again, right. that's an estimate. I, I guess the question I have is, I, I, I understand what you're trying to say. We're moving up from one column to the other, so there, there'll still be a surplus of two or three hundred thousand, like we're asking. In our budget? Yeah. Yeah, there'll actually be a surplus of well, one million well, two hundred thousand. Okay. Because I'm moving a million over there too, but I'm still not going to spend that original two or three hundred. So assuming we do this, so in three years there should be three point, you know, there should be an extra three million, correct? No, because they're not going to let us access any of our unused budget authority. This million, this million is cash. Mm -hmm. It's just going to show up on our budget. It's going to allow me instead of raising my budget to four point eight million, 
raise it to five million or five point one. I'll lower my spent cost down because I always inflated them. We're still going to have about the same budget. We're going to still going to have about the same levy. I, I I think we'll still have the same cash. I can't see that we wouldn't. Again, I only plan on spending Randy seven point one million this year. But if we decide we want to transfer a hundred thousand to depreciation for buses in the next couple of years because of the budget cap, if we decide to buy both buses instead of one of them out of the regular budget, we may spend seven point three million. We may spend 7.4. We have the authority to do it. It still doesn't make a difference on our levy. It won't change our cash reserve because that 1.8 million was above the 7.4 million. If I don't spend the 7.4 million, our cash reserve for next year would probably be over 2 million because I got that amount of money. And if we decide not to transfer it anywhere, it just builds up. Or we drop the levy down and we use some of the cash reserve to make up for the drop in levy. You can do that too. Uh, I like to keep a healthy cash reserve, and you know, I wouldn't recommend that, but districts have done it, so I mean, we could too. I know probably some of this doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I, I'm puzzled as to why we, we, were, we were the fourth lowest spending district, yet when we get, we get nailed and we're the lowest budget authority district. And the only thing I can think of is how we budgeted for the voice home in and out, showed it as a both an in and out receipt and expenditure, and it didn't cost us, but that extra revenue maybe made us look, I don't know. They haven't explained it to me well at the State Department either, but again, they're getting, they're getting inundated by everybody complaining about this. It all just came out last week that th this is just a projection on LB-235. It's, they say it's as close to accurate as they can get until the bill is finalized, but, uh, but again, it's hard for me to plead my case when everybody's complaining. We're the only ones that really have this unique situation. So, but I guess if I had to tell you, it's it'll be we're not going to do anything different than we had planned on doing. We're just showing that a million in a different category than we used to. That's that's all. Question. I thought I had one sitting in everybody's spot. I thought I had one sitting in everybody's spot. I thought I had one sitting in everybody's I guess if you think of a question between now and Next board meeting, I'll, I'll try my best, and maybe if I get anything back from Janice or Russ at the State Department, I'll forward it on to you. So, again, I, I know Exeter Milligan, I think they only had, you could you can only, we're lucky that we have three and a half million in unused budget authority, otherwise I couldn't move that million over. You can only move as much as you have budget authority. I think Exeter Milligan only had 300 and some thousand in unused budget authority. So that's all they could move out of their cash reserve to their budget was that 300,000. Again, like Centennial, they only have like 35,000. So I think they can have like a special election where the district votes to exceed the budget authority. I think that's the only other way that, that you can do it is to have a special vote for people to, to override. They, they, they're handcuffed with, they don't have any, they don't have the budget authorities, they don't have the they don't have the way we can do it. I mean, if they did have, they would be doing it. So, okay. we'll move on then to the facilities committee. Just open up the thoughts. I think I gave everybody my thoughts and. Letter home. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we better get we better hear from everybody. I think if we can. So basically, what we're going to be doing is uh, approving or or suggesting that we do a study. Is that what the next step is? 